Good morning. I'm Scott Clark. I'm Peggy Herson. <laughs> and I'm Rick Entrop. We just took a drink of coffee for some reason. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Are you drinking coffee today? Excuse me. No, 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 no. Oh, I was uh, like, what? It's in a, it's in a coffee yeah. thing, huh? No, it's hot chocolate. But oh, okay. Anyway, you missed your cue. You, I totally. But that's oh, all right. Yeah, that's failed. That's to do. Um, we bad. are, we are coming to you from the coffee shop, and so today, 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 I'm in the here. Today, today. Um, we are coming. Uh, we are broadcasting from Anthem Coffee and Tea, which used to be a Forza. Oh, yeah, yeah. A long time ago. What was it? A Forza. A Forza. Forza is Forza we coffee. recorded at a Forza downtown. Yeah. It's oh, okay. a chain. Or it's kind of like chain. the, the like third a, smallest. Yeah. It's like number three in the chain of Seattle in Coffee. Seattle. Oh, okay. They're, they right. were good. They were a little, like, little she-she for us. Yeah. Like, we showed up and walked in and we're like, oh, right. what, so it, what? it like had, it was like fancy mm. and like, it just felt really fancy. May I take your coat, kind of like, sir? That's oh. what yeah. it felt like. It yeah. had cloth oh. napkins and we were like, should we? Yeah, let's oh. just, let's yeah, be screw cool. it. It was fun. It was actually really okay. fun. Nobody it was really, really fun. It was, yeah, it was, it, the cared. acoustics was good because yeah. the, the glass actually reverbed around. Yeah. Cool. So it picked up the, uh, the oh, sound okay. really good. Yeah. Nice. And it was like right downtown across from the Seattle Art Museum. It yeah. was nice. It was yeah, just cool. one of those places where if I walked in, I would expect to get lunch for like 17 bucks. Hmm. You okay. Know? Yeah. Sure. It okay. was very high Those places high I class. usually turn around and walk back out. It's like, oh, who's the wrong spot? Like, yeah. I know. I'm ghetto, yeah. but that's fine. Yeah, I mean, me too. It just tells you where, where you know, our upbringing. You uh-huh. know, it's like, wow, this place has napkins instead of uh-huh. instead of paper. Yeah. It was, <laughs> anyway, it, it's Super Bowl Sunday. we got to bring that up. Yeah. You know, we, By the time you're listening yeah. to this, you will already know who yeah. won. Right. right. So, so you'll is, already know that Seattle won. <laughs> <laughs> Heard yeah. the uh, or seen the meme about the the Simpsons episode in 1991 uh-uh. where they had a fictional Super Bowl between the Broncos and the and the Seahawks. Are you no. serious? Wow! People were posting it on Facebook last night, oh, and huh. there's a a screen image where Lisa's laying on the floor and Homer's sitting on the couch, and the TV screen says Broncos 19, Seattle 14. And apparently, so the Broncos win in oh, the Simpsons yeah. fictional Super Bowl. Well, of course. Oh. And so there was some like, like, um, odds makers in Las Vegas were using yeah. it as a reason to skew the odds toward Broncos. <laughs> oh. And that, like that's what they said. They were like, well, yeah. the Simpsons predicted it, so right, you know, right. here are the uh, odds based on that, which I thought was really well, kind of cute. Yeah. But um, uh, anyway. Uh, I don't. Really, I vaguely remember that. Commercial. I was like 21 when that came out. When that episode came out. You know, have you guys watched The Simpsons in the last few years? No. Actually, yeah, I did tune really? in for a couple episodes. Just what was it? Was the one where Homer? Where Homer? Homer. Homer. <laughs> Homer we have the, seen Simpsons. Uh, yeah. Homer. Did it make you he, sad? Because I've tried to watch it, and every time I get about four minutes in, and I'm like, ugh. Oh, it's so bad. I can't yeah. do it. it, 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 it okay. It hurts me. It was the one where he downloaded some movies off the internet and uh-huh. then was projecting them in his backyard because the theater uh-huh. prices were oh, so high. Okay. It was all right. See, I've, yeah. I've watched a couple episodes and it feels like somebody's grandpa t- commenting on modern society. Like one that I saw, which was uh-huh. now a few years ago, was like Lisa got a MyPad. And it was like, oh, oh right, a right. my pad, and it was so like, oh, I'm gonna go on, like the, the book face, right, and they were right. like, it was just so stupid, right. and I was like, dude, the internet, like, like this is just life now, like, like making some right. kind of weird commentary on like, oh, you know, now I'm glued to this screen, eh, like it just feels so stupid right. that I yeah. was like, oh, I screw think, you yeah. guys, like you guys used to be on the cutting edge of like. Yeah. Like looking ahead, and but now well, that's how many South different Park, writers know? have cycled through there? I mean, at least with what, South Park, like you know, years? it's like yeah. it's Trey Parker, Masto, that's going to be who, yeah. who's, right. who's telling the story. Yeah, the Simpsons to me, they, it's almost like somebody who's working past their retirement. They just don't know they should have retired. You know, they, well, and the had thing their is, run. the original Simpsons guys are like Conan O'Brien is one of them. And right, they're all. Yeah, they're off. Captains of industry now. Yeah, they're off but on their like, own stuff. It just yeah. was so tired. And I, like, for example, I know I, well, you guys are a little bit into theater sometimes. Right. But like, sometimes. <laughs> but like, theater. Okay, well, this was like four years ago. Yeah. I was at um, 
the Looking Glass Theater in Chicago, which is David Schwimmer's theater. Okay. I mean, he, he's a found, founding member of, like, this group of people. Right. Maybe there's, like, 13, but he's the most famous one. Yeah. So people think of it as David Schwimmer's theater. Right. But they were doing um, a play, and it was, like, looking at, you know... Um, how technology is whatever and I was standing in front of the thing reading the, the description of the play and how it was like fusing social media with theater okay. and my friend and I looked at each other and we're like well they're about six years too late for that one right. and like it wow. felt tired already and this was like five years ago and like the, the show Smash um, which is now off the air but it was a TV show about Broadway plays right right their big, like, the the cutting-edge play at the end of it was one that fused social media with... And so, like, people were getting text messages from the play during the show hmm. and stuff. And I was like, uh... Like, it just... Everything, like, art about technology is so much slower than technology right, that right. it already feels tired by the time, the time it comes it out. out. Yeah. And so oh, I just get, like, I don't know. Well, like, and I have you seen THX? Uh, I guess movies are different than well, theater. Well, I know really. THX in terms of sound. That George Lucas's that was one of his first, first movie, movies. movies. Oh no, I've which, never seen. Yeah, it. was about sort of like technology. That's I don't know, but you, you're talking about theater, which is not. Well, no, I'm talking about movies too, though, oh, yeah? because a lot of times, like her. Well, any any movie about the future is going to be. Right. But um, I think movies tend right. to project farther into the future, so by the time they come out. It still feels futuristic, futuristic yeah. because they're like, because have you guys seen the ads for her? It's Spike Jones's new movie yeah. with, um, yeah, with well, Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix and yeah. he falls in love with his operating system. Oh, right. Huh. To me, it's like, well, like it's a little bit today because series around and operating right, systems right. are almost there, yeah, right. but it's enough ahead still that that doesn't exist yeah. yet. And I find the things that really feel tired are the things that are about stuff like that already exists. Okay. Because by the time the art comes right. out, yeah, yeah, the thing behind. has yeah. existed for so long that everyone's just like, well, yeah, yeah tell me, I'm, yeah, Facebook well, is my It could be just when the screenwriter was writing it uh-huh. too, so it's like yeah. he's, he's catching the kind of the trendy sort of stuff. And, and then... When you can do it well is when you can get in what I consider, and Spike Jones is really good at this, the future now zone, oh. which is like the um, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Have you seen that movie? I yeah. think so. Which is the perfect balance to me because it is set in the present with a whole bunch of hipsters. Is that where he's trying to forget something? Yeah, he's well, but a technology exists okay. that wipes your memory, which doesn't exist now. Right. And so it's futuristic, but it exists now. Right. So it feels relevant, but it has technology right. that like we can imagine, but that we don't have. Right. And to me, that's a good science fiction because it's like... But then there's the ones that fall flat, like Lawnmower Man, where virtual right. reality is supposed to be the oh, next right, thing. Right, right, right. And that's, at least we're still not there. I mean, no, there's Google yeah. Glass, which is kind of trying to take off, but... But it's, Otherwise, we're, it's way different no, than what they projected yeah. it to be. Do totally. you remember a movie? I think it was from the mid '80s, late '80s, where a guy he gets his computer and he, he takes it home and he spills coffee on it, and his computer actually comes uh-huh. to life huh. and falls in love with like uh, the computer. Isn't actually it called home. like the computer wore tennis shoes or something like that? It's kind huh. of bacon in it. I don't. I don't <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Wow. <laughs> I don't remember, bacon. but yeah. it was like he like he put in his his name as Miles, but he mm. misspells it as Mole, so the computer talks huh. to him as. Hello, Moles. Moles. That's really funny. Yeah, I want to okay. watch that. No, yeah. Uh, I don't I remember mean, I the like name of it. I mean, I like science fiction. I just like the... It's the stuff that's commenting on... You know, people have tried to use I think it's called computer love. Oh, funny. I think oh, it's what it's called, okay. it's computer love. They try to use it to, like, say something about, like, how interactions are changing, but they, they use it in such a slow way that, like... The interactions have already right. changed by the time you're seeing the thing that's right. commenting right. on how they've changed. Yeah, like... I, I've been waiting for cell phone, like people's interest in what they put for ringtones to become part of, of like, entertainment media. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, someone's thing, cell phone's ringing. What what is it? Is it always right. just the 
you know. But oh, the thing yeah. with ringtones is the interesting thing, like with email, that ringtones are like people who are like Kaylee's age don't have ringtones. Yeah. And people who are oh. Kaylee's age don't have email. People who are our age have email, but emails die. I guess for, for our texting, audience out there, right. what is Kaylee's age? Oh, sorry. So Kaylee's 19. 19. Or 20. Okay. I can't okay, remember so how old she is. Sure, sure. But like people who are our age, like I, I'm like, why would you not check your email? But all of the research on the just younger generation is like they don't check email. They text. They use right. social media instead yeah. of email. Right. And so like like now I have a friend who's developing a text based mobile phone app for applying for part time hourly jobs because pe- younger people right, that's are true. more comfortable using that format that's you why can find hey we'll work for you but then it's right. have you then text type or whatever but it's changing so quickly that it's like if you wanted to say something about email like we'd all go oh yeah email right. and people yeah. younger than us would be like I don't even have what an is email that? address yeah. and it's a problem well, in colleges with because like today's technology though I mean you can video chat with someone for free yeah, you know totally. that's totally possible go back in the 80s and oh I mean that's gosh. what they were touting that you know? was that like was the back to the future thing yeah. 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 that was Jetsons totally yeah. Yeah. speaking of back to the future huh. have you heard they're doing a musical no, no yeah. that makes me so happy they're doing a back to the future musical no, really? Michael J. Fox can be no. I wonder I what songs Michael they would have in it though awesome songs know. from the 80s yeah. maybe a lot of they'd be singing them for sure. a lot of uh, Huey yeah. Lewis in the news yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. I'm first in line well, to see that that would like be Huey awesome Lewis no news? but that's the big thing in Broadway which Broadway yeah. people get really annoyed Did, with is the like let's take some movie that everyone oh, likes Spamalot and have you seen Spamalot no but I'm going Yeah, it won a ton of Tonys the, I believe in them because that was written by the the Monty Python guys. Yeah. Oh. So the thing they is, though, adapted I, their own work, which makes me feel more safe. And I love the music from it. Anyway. Go ahead. I love the music <laughs> from it. I don't like the the CD that they put out for it though, because huh. I've listened to the oh. CD and it's yeah. like this is yeah. garbage. Really? Yeah, I didn't like it at all. But you're not. Are you into <laughs> musical theater? Not really. Okay. Because I like it. Well, yeah, I guess I shouldn't so say I it's garbage. It's I guess it's just my, it's not my audience. taste, I yeah. guess. I, I shouldn't have judged it. I, yeah. No, it's fine. But I think you it's written <laughs> for a musical theater audience. Sorry. And it's adapted by the... And those guys are musical oh, comedians. Sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. So I feel right. like I'll be okay. Like, yeah. I will like it. It's not for everybody. But, like, um, the flip side of that just is the wedding the singer to their stuff musical. Either. Oh, you yeah. can tell they're just like... It's like eh, Except they won, like... Six Tonys or something? Well, again, I didn't actually That's see the yeah. production, well, so I can't... Well, I will see it and I'll give you my review. Okay. Where's it playing? I'm it in like three weeks. Where is it? Um, Fifth yeah. Avenue Theater. Okay. Um, well, it's got to be... My friend Rachel and I are going. To make it... That's like the best place to go see a yeah. play in Seattle, yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, yeah, yeah, I think other than the Paramount, maybe. Yeah, but no, the awesome. Fifth yeah. Avenue is smaller, and so you get yeah. a more... You're, not, more you're less likely to be way up. It's more but, intimate. Um, I, but I've seen shows in both. And the Paramount has better sound, in my opinion. Okay. But I don't know if that's... You know what, though? I've seen two things at Fifth Avenue. One had great sound, which was the Seattle Men's Chorus right. Hairspray in Concert, which the sound was fantastic. The other one I saw there was the Jersey Boys touring show, okay. and the sound sucked. Yeah, like, that, that's really bad. by the stage, the, the staging of it, right? Yeah, that's I think maybe perfect. they brought their own sound stuff in and just right. didn't and they calibrate didn't, it, it yeah, correctly. Yeah, it yeah well, you gotta, yeah, you have to. I was really disappointed really do with that, the sound right? because if you just yeah. have, if, especially, you gotta have someone go out in the audience yeah. and see and sit everywhere and make sure. And it's And Jersey Boys is about yeah. um, the Four Seasons. Is it the Four Seasons? Oh my gosh, my brain. Just I don't know anything. Second check. No. Um, Frankie Valley. I don't Valley. Even know anything about Four Seasons. Oh, What's well, it's the thing? guys. It's the the Cherry Baby. Oh, okay. I know Frankie Cherry Valley. Baby. Yeah, yeah it's right. that group, and it's okay. their musical story. Okay. And so it's oh, most of it is singing and hearing this like crazy tenor, and it, oh, it's okay. all okay. about the music. I mean, okay. there's plot in it, but really it's just like music. music, and I, like, they would be singing just like a great song, and I'm like, man, if, if the sound was better, this would be so much better, because it was just kind of like, oh, this song is so great, and then you're like, uh, yeah, I wish it was like a louder and more, right, like, right, sharper, right. Oh, yeah. and it just kind of yeah. was like, well, there's a guy, because you could tell they were singing the crap out of it, like, the voices were really great, they just needed to, like, turn, turn it up to 11. 
crazy. Yeah. Yeah. A couple yeah. knobs well, needed to be fixed. Yeah. Anyway, that drove me crazy too because yeah. I was really looking It drives me crazy when, to that. when I can tell when sound is, it sounds like it's clipping. It's like yeah. where they've got volume, one volume cranked up way too much and then another way too down. So totally. it actually presses the, or it clips. So you're not hearing the higher end. Right. Totally. So. Yep. But anyway, I'm seeing spam lot there. And hopefully it'll be great. And actually, weird bit of trivia. Um, the person who won the Tony for Spamalot for playing Lady of the Lake hmm. now is a cast member on Grey's Anatomy. Oh, nice. <laughs> and she's like so just like soap opera actress on Grey's Anatomy. And every once in a while I'll be like, she won a Tony for a comedic musical. Huh. Could not be doing something more, more opposite of distant from where like, she was at, yeah. lesbian dramatic actress <laughs> on Grey's Anatomy. I don't know if she's a lesbian, but she plays a lesbian. Huh. Dramatic actress playing sad lesbian on because she's a sad lesbian. I mean, she's not sad in the pathetic, but like a lot of her life is sad. Uh, bitter? Oh yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, or like just like like she like she's been divorced a whole bunch of times sure. and like well, just shit happens to right. her. But like okay. weird, and I always like try to picture her in like the big Lady of the Lake costume singing all these songs, and I, I just those two images like can't hmm. coexist in my brain. Yeah. But she's like a really well known. So you basically Broadway in your actress. mind you typecast her a little yes. bit. And weirdly enough, Audra McDonald, who is like a legendary Broadway actress is in the spin-off of Grey's Anatomy. So maybe Chandra Rhimes, the, the writer, is a Broadway fan. Because Audra McDonald, she played the Mother Superior in the most recent version of Sound of Music, which I don't know if you guys were on Facebook the day that was on TV. No. All of my gays were like, like Carrie Underwood was playing <laughs> Maria Von Trapp, and they what? were like, "She's murdering my childhood." Oh, like they were like going on and on and on about how awful it was. I think I would be all of my gays. Yeah, I have a lot of gays on <laughs> Facebook. Gays. And like, if there's something, it's funny because they're they're in like a couple of them are in Washington D.C., a couple are in New York, a couple are in California, a couple are in Washington, and they will all you be posting enough? about the same like when when the sound of music thing was on, they were all posting about Sound of Music. Now, would and you I say like, you, you have enough so gays to make a plethora? I do have a plethora of gays. A plethora of gays. It's true. I want to know. It's just so yeah. funny to me. I'm like, you are all, none of you know each other. You're all in different cities. And yeah, you're all watching the Sound of Music. And yeah. and it was the day that Nelson Mandela died. <laughs> Way to break so a my stereotype. greatest, it was like my most perfect moment on Facebook was I posted According to my Facebook feed, I'm pretty sure that Carrie Underwood murdered Nelson Mandela. And I was like, yes! It was like the perfect intersection. Because all my social work friends were like, oh, Nelson Mandela's dead, and like really lamenting. And then all of my watching, gay yeah. friends were like, Carrie Underwood is the worst! Yeah, it's a perfect storm for me to make a really irreverent joke. That's true. <laughs> I no, like those moments. too soon? Yeah. yeah. Um, Anyway, we were talking about the Super Bowl, and now we're on to Movies sound music because I exist. Well, you know, we're uh, switching subjects up real quick. I think it's very huh. convenient that they have a, oh. a outlet thing right there. That is a very power strip. They have a power Yeah, it's strip. like, hey, we could have brought a mixer if we wanted to, oh, nice. you know. But, yeah, totally. Uh, it's just, that's very you know, considerate. That is. I, I wanted to give a little credit to Kanita for help picking this place because that's where we're, we're, I was thinking about where we are going to go. I was going to pick... Um, uh, place in Auburn again. Oh, okay. Just because oh. of the paninis. Like, yeah, Zola's. Oh, nice. Yeah, I used that place like, a yeah. lot. Yeah, and then yeah, well, they like, had my favorite sandwich so far. Yeah, so. that's that was, that's why I was going to do it because I like Rick liked the sandwich so much. Like, oh, well. Take it back. But if we yeah, thought about this place, I was yeah, like, you yeah, know what? That's great. It's perfect. Venture south a little bit. I yeah. really like the decor because it yeah. feels like somebody like designed. Excuse me, designed it. Hmm. Like it really feels like somebody was like. We're gonna have this bar look this way and this fireplace. It just looks really put together. It, it, it's and live it. and loud. It is. It, is that what it says, it says on the <laughs> wall there? Yeah. Oh, live and loud. That's yeah. funny. Um, oh, okay. Well, then they have like some bugle, some guys with some huge sound of bugle things. I guess, uh, yeah. Nice. Oh, that's cool. We'll have to get a picture of it. Doing the, yeah. uh, doing the, rev uh, doing the morning revelry. Yeah. yeah. You know what I, the next phase yeah. of my art stuff is? I now, because for the listeners, of course, I've talked about collecting art. Hmm. And now my living room has like the right amount of like, like just enough different kinds of art that I think it looks really good. And then my nephew, Christopher, gave me for my birthday um, an 11 by 17 
uh, print of uh, the Lord of the Rings map. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I, I found this really nice wood frame. It looks really good. And now I want to have like a little Lord of the Rings thing. Like, I found this um, wall sculpture of Gollum, but not the new Gollum, the old 70s cartoon Gollum. Oh, nice. And it's like a 3D oh, cool. sculpture. And I'm, I'm so now when I get a new job, I'm going to buy that. But I want to have a little, and I've done some some embroidery. Like, I, have, I made a placemat with the symbol from the doors to the Mines of Moria okay. with the tree that says, you know, speak friend at enter. Um, because I was doing needlepoint, and I was like, "What? I do a Lord of the Rings sure. needlepoint." Yeah, nice, nice. And so I was like, "Well, I could put those things up and kind of have a little Lord of the Rings thing." And then my other thing, the next phase, I want to get vintage pictures of boxers, like oh, cool. photographs of like ye well, old, like, like Cassius Clay. Like, <laughs> no, I'm talking Bobby. like old, old, well, like the, 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 the 1920s, yeah, like they, real, like okay. got their hey, like sure, with the mustaches sure. and yeah, like you know, Lord, like weird. Well, Stance. What do they call that? The, the, yeah. the rules, the Lord of what, the Roxbury or something like that. Yeah. I didn't know it had a name. Yeah, it has some kind of name. But it's where your arms are stance? all weird. Yeah, yeah like yeah, they, they're kind of pointed. Put up your dukes. Yeah. Put up your dukes. Yeah. yeah. Because I saw but a couple of them. They do like a little mixture yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> we're so doing, I want to get some like. you can't see, Rick and I, I know, we're doing all doing. But I, I was like, you know, it would be cool to get like some just like old photographs. And I even, I was looking on Etsy and one person had a poster that was like um an instructional boxing um like punches from like the 20s with like like um drawings oh, cool. so it's like a like you oh, know an okay. uppercut yeah. okay and you can probably find all kind of images online too. yeah I mean, you can still just go to a nice we, i used to go to uh, totally. the library where they have their old time life <laughs> oh, yeah. and go through them and Ooh, that's cool and yeah, yeah i didn't think out. about yeah, yeah totally <laughs> well they, they were free you would take them and we take them apart there would be oh, old ads and stuff that. oh, cool. yeah. that's huh. cool nice. right on so anyway, that's the, my next, like, when I think about, like, well, I, I like, like, my different things of art, and now I'm kind of, like, I'm making my own little home gallery where I'm, like, well, this, like, if I'm thinking about, like, my, my art art would be, like, the living room, and then, like, my bathroom might be boxing. You know, I'm just, I'm like, I'm segmenting, sure, and then my sure. bedroom would have Lord of the Rings stuff in it, or mm, something. Nice. I don't know why. Very themey. Yeah. Yeah. Because now I'm kind of grouping them in a weird way. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, I've always wanted to have, like, a shadow box with Pez. You know, <laughs> just, like, oh, that would yeah, be cool. Yeah, just, I've, I've seen kind of, like, the like bobbleheads at Pez. that one yeah. place we went to. They had those, like, all those bobbleheads in the shadow yeah, boxes. That was, yeah, that was <laughs> cool. That would be cool. Really quick, or not really quick, I don't know how long this is going to last, but we are going to a movie premiere next this Thursday coming up. Where at? In uh, Northgate. Hmm. It is Need for Speed. And Jesse from Breaking Bad, Aaron Paul, really? is going to be there. And the director also awesome. is going to be there. Wow, they're going to be there at Northgate? Yeah, for a Q&A. Uh, I've yeah. seen nice. a preview for this huh. movie, and it is an interesting post-Breaking Bad choice for Aaron Paul, if you ask me. You know, and that's it looks thing. a little... Cheesy. Yeah, it is. It's but a, it's a, I'm on board with him for whatever he wants to do. I think he can I'm pull it fan. off. Sure. It's yeah. a video game. Yeah. Made movie, right. and you know, it's kind of like it's a little need for not need for speed, but Fast and Furious type. Uh huh. But one of the main reason why we're going, we got invited through our Mustang Club because oh, cool. one of the main characters in the movie is a, is a uh, GT500. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Mustang. So, oh, cool. Are you guys all nice. bringing your cars and stuff? Yeah, that's that part of the, awesome. That's the kind of awesome. thing. So we'll be parked out. We'll nice. have pictures. I'll, I'll, I'll put some pictures up on them. I, but Do one it. thing I'm think, wondering is like how many, because you know, we're going to have a Q&A. Huh. I just nice. wonder how many people are going to ask about Breaking Bad, not about the movie. Oh, well, of wonder, course. That's what. Yeah. That's his, I mean, that's how he got. That's his selling point yeah, now. Well, yeah. Right. His, yeah, I mean, it would be like. Uh, the kid from Harry Potter wanted yeah. something to him, and him not, you know, not have one Harry Potter yeah. question. Right? I hate that. It, well, and it's um, have you guys? Do you, uh, I was just talking about Saturday Night Live with Rick, but have you watched oh, any Saturday Night Live in the last year or two? You know, it's getting really good. I really people who were like, because a couple a year or two ago it was like really not great. This season is like a totally new, like really good sketches. Like really? in the last the last episode I watched, there were like. Four Four sketches that I was like, that was like a piece of art. Like, there's mm. one sketch where it's like Keenan Thompson, right. uh, Taron Killam, and the Isn't there a local, guy who does There's a the, guy from 
Washington that's on the cast, is I think, there? now. I, I don't think, know. Or was. I know, like, four people on the cast right now. It's Do you very really? Weird. People that I knew it's in Chicago and have really weird connections to. Huh. It's, it right now is, like, the, because I've been gone from Chicago long uh-huh. enough that the people I was there with who were, like, the really good people have now moved to the next huh. level. Makes anyway. me wonder how did you stayed in Chicago? Had you would you have moved with that group or no? no, no. I, I mean, they were the people who were like. I mean, if I stayed there and was like hitting the pavement, right. and working really hard, maybe five years from now I could be at that level. Oh, okay. But they were the people who were already at the top of the game oh, when yeah. I was there. So they were on their way yeah. to graduate oh, to the next sure. level. Okay. Totally, they're really talented. Um, but I never wanted it that much. <laughs> but but no, they had a sketch where they're like <laughs> sitting in a car waiting to like bust caps and some guys they're like bugs and it starts to snow and then Keenan's like man that snow is just like beautiful and, and he starts like getting really nostalgic about the snow and then the other ones are like we gotta fuck these guys up and he's like yeah and then get some hot cocoa and like it's so funny it's oh, really funny. and it's shot in this really like like mis- like beautiful way it's kind of shot like a movie anyway but no my point was that there was a um, Saturday Night Live okay what was my point Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Aaron Paul, there was an episode okay. where he kept showing up as Jesse from Breaking Bad oh, yeah. in different sketches and it was oh, so huh. funny that's, to me that's pretty funny. because yeah. like he would just like show up and it was like um, like Drunk Uncle was on um, it's a character on okay. Weekend Update yeah. and it's it's Bobby Moynihan doing like, he's super drunk and he's like, and then Jesse came on as, his, as the meth nephew <laughs> and it was so funny, like he just kept doing that and it gave me the idea that I wanted him to like just as Jesse do cameos on different TV shows sure, like one week yeah. he's the the, oh, the guy who's work. in the hospital on house yeah, or like yeah, one totally. week and I'm like just yeah. as Jesse like just as a though, couple lines as though nothing. Jesse lives on right right but in gets incorporated TV. Yeah. somehow into totally yeah. as a, more I, like like, a, I like wish a, I could make that oh, yeah. happen oh, like a totally. fugitive type uh-huh. like you could totally actually pitch that as like you could pitch it to where like, does yeah. Jesse go like, where does like he he's like, on an episode of Mike and Molly or something Yes. Yes. Some kind of, and you don't have he's to, on the Today he Show for some next door. reason. Yeah, no. he's like standing at the window behind yeah. <laughs> Al Roker or whatever. Yeah. If I, let's like, do like a fine Jesse. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That would make me so happy. It would be the greatest thing. Well, and he would have agent. to sacrifice his life and career, but I'm okay with that for him. Oh no, to he do would do get for paid. Me. He would get paid. <laughs> he's actually, I mean, getting into movies is really smart. Yeah, so, it's true. Yeah. Um, he, he, doing another TV thing would keep him in TV. Yeah. Yeah. But like he's, I just would. That would like if I saw him like as a guy on oh, totally. Mike and Molly, yeah. I would just yeah. be so happy. Yeah, the kid is in movies, actor, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, he's in the new Star Wars. What? I know. Yeah. It's like he's just like I don't know. Yeah. Just found himself on this planet. He would be a great use like, the force, yo. Future yeah. Han Solo. Bitch. He is, I think he'd say use the force, bitch. bitch. He is sort of a version of Han Solo. Huh. Think about kind it. Of. Like very roguish and heroic. Yeah, and yeah. And, and yeah. there's the lesson. A little bit of arcishness uh-huh. to him. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so the Super Bowl, huh? I'm just kidding. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just joking. Yeah, uh, I'm just making fun of myself because every time we bring it up, I change the subject. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, you guys. It's all right. Are you guys watching the Super Bowl today? Yeah, we we uh, <laughs> You guys are both wearing Super Bowl. But look, yeah, look. Actually, Peggy yeah, tried. I'm wearing tried. a green shirt and a blue tank top. Oh, nice. I tr- not the right blue oh. and green, uh, but I, like, I made an works. effort. So uh, I'm nice, wearing a. Nice. A, a Super Bowl type shirt doesn't say it just has numbers on it and yeah, it says Super Bowl uh, where XL there's numbers I know but yeah. it's it's referential but anyway so explain so these were printed these were printed at my wife's uh, company oh, awesome. and cool. she comes home and they're printing us shirts and they're only this much and that, what and here's the colors we have to choose from which yeah. one do you want I chose this one right you want the blue one, she says. Huh. The navy one. I said, no, I uh, you asked me what color that, I want. That is a nice shirt. Uh, you you me, want the day glow want, neon yeah, green. I, and Kenita yeah. wants the navy blue. It's oh, it's not the, 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 the actual, green. according to Wikipedia, the, the Seahawk green is called action green. Action Ooh. green. Yeah. Yeah. So I got I action, green. action green. Action green. With the My green, green is grip. definitely hunter green, oh, which yeah. is why I'm not really Seahawksy. I'm the, well, but this is an effort color. for me. This was literally me going, maybe I should wear something Seahawks, and yeah. was the closest I had. Well, um, 
someone was telling me that they had found like 20 million already in confiscated uh, oh, really? bootleg Seahawks oh, right. apparel already. Right. Nice. <laughs> and, and so, I'm sure. Yeah. As you drive through my town, there's like little tents set up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Have you yeah. guys seen um, Stephen Colbert this week? Uh, uh, the Colbert uh, Report? Oh, no. He oh. had the Superb Owl edition, oh, no. which is super, super Bowl, but just the space is in the wrong yeah. place. Huh. Oh. And he was like, yeah. like he kept... Um, talking about the superb owl nice. because he couldn't say Super Bowl apparently right. for copyright it's infringement and right. then he had a segment on owls because he's like, lest anyone <laughs> oh, think yeah. this is not about owls. Right. He ver- had so, like, they so, talked so about bowl, owls. So it sands the bee, it's is owls. Right. Right. Okay. Superb. So you move the bee nice. over. Superb oh, cool. owl. Nice. It was very, very clever. Yeah, 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 I was yeah, like, yeah. he totally nailed it. Nice, yeah, nice. I liked it. That's a and show the owl I, wish I, was cool. I, yeah. I wish I'd seen that more. I like yeah, it. It's on Hulu, yeah? Yeah. I watch okay. it every every day the next day the on day Hulu. After. Yeah, because yeah. it's... Yeah, it's, it's he, what I put on good. when I'm watching when I'm eating dinner. Oh. I do Daily Show Colbert while I'm cooking and eating. It's a nice cool. like. Yeah, thing I'm getting, a, I'm getting cool. an HDMI adapter for my phone so right I can on. stream it right to my TV. Oh, so that's, that's oh. nice. That little screen yeah. is just hard to watch. Yeah, totally. That's you smart. Huh. Yeah, right on. Indeed. Smart phone. So my wife had a really neat uh, kind of late idea, but someone should have promoted the whole because like pot got legalized in Washington mm-hmm. and Colorado so it's like the battle doing of the on, they have on been doing jokes on okay. Daily Show the and, Super Bowl, and right? like yeah, Jay Super Leno Bowl, and stuff exactly. but it hasn't gone farther it's, than like oh I guess everyone's hot yeah, right, like yeah. nobody did anything really clever yeah, with like it the, yeah like made the weed bowl on, or K, uh-huh. on KGR they, they did a bet with another radio station in, in Colorado uh-huh. and they're, they're they bet coffee Oh. So that's their their coffee. best Seattle's yeah. best green coffee against green? their oh. coffee. Uh, I guess I don't know Colorado. You think skiing is all I think. Yeah, of. I mean that's what Colorado is known for. Skiing, hippies. Yeah, yeah. We're just, very similar states in my mind. Like oh, yeah, for the, sure. you know, well, I guess they're still west, but I think of them as the southern version yeah. of Washington in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, but I've noticed in the news, Colorado gets more play for legalizing weed oh, than yeah, we do, yeah, and totally. I wonder why. Because they're, they're further ahead than we are right now, as far oh, as like, oh, are they? Yeah, I didn't they realize that. yeah, yeah, they have like lines going around the dispensaries. Oh, they're okay. running out of people. Yeah. To, uh, Ours are April, right? For retail? Yeah, well, I heard there was a date set. Yeah. I mean, not that they you actually have a drought right now. They're they're out of pot. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Who's they? Colorado. Everyone? Oh, because oh, oh, everyone was like, "Hell yeah, let's yeah. go buy some." They yeah. ran out. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's. I mean, I'm sure that whoever's underground growing it because it's yeah. not illegal to grow it right, right. or something no I, I think you have to have a permit you, do, you have to I'm pay sure. like tens of thousands of dollars oh, really? for like I'm a permit sure. to grow it yeah so I, uh, and well, the transportation of it's still illegal yeah. it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of it is still it's, that great it, it's so, legal no. but it's yeah. legal but right, you know, right. yeah well, and who knows what's gonna it's it's gonna be an interesting thing when the if when and if the Fed gets involved. Yeah, that's Because true. it's like a big states' rights versus yeah. what the Fed could do. So. Did I tell you guys I do this um I do this government survey like opinion poll thing for free movie hmm. tickets? I've been doing it for oh. like four oh, years. Oh right, right, I remember. Um and when a couple months ago they we had one that was opinions about whether the feds should get involved and they, they publish the results a lot. Like they'll send an email right. out that's like, here's what you guys said. Yeah. And on that one it was like Everybody's just like, why don't we just not like feds shouldn't get involved? So at least public yeah. opinion is right. like, yeah. like if states want to make it legal, they make it legal. Like, right. why are you messing around with this? I think governments this? shouldn't even get involved. Right. It's like yeah. we're not hurting anybody, so why are you involved in, in, in so, at any rate? But speaking right. of being high, I brought a candy that I would like to share with the group. Oh. About it's not a candy that makes you high. Oh. You guys oh, look so disappointed. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Is it one of those kind of? It is the like the yeah. most. I saw it at the grocery store last night, and I was yeah. like, "Who other than the very high would want this?" And I was like, "We have oh. to try it." Are you guys okay. ready? Sure. Limited edition chocolate pop rocks. Wow, <laughs> rich chocolate milk rich with a kick. With a kick. Nice. You guys want to try them? Sure. So these are pop rocks. Nice. Presumably covered in chocolate. I, I, okay, I it's love, like I Cocoa just, Krispies kind of thing. I think so. <laughs> Uh, All right, I'm gonna I, I try love that rumor okay. that the, the uh, urban. Oh, you didn't get us each one. Oh, we only get a little. No, I didn't want to eat a whole pack myself. Oh, okay. I mean, to me, it uh, these must be disgusting, right? 
This is my uh, assumption. Flip a coin there. They're not diet <laughs> no. chocolate pop rocks. Oh my gosh, so. but <laughs> that would be really funny. Carbs. We all have no carbs. <laughs> yeah, just do nothing but no, I'm as, eating carbs today. aspartame and super low. <laughs> pop rocks. Or, yeah. just kinda, all right, ready? There's the salad. Rocks. Okay, right. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, they're much less pop rocky than I was expecting. Yeah, they're like chocolate covered pop rocks. Oh, there they are. Once you get the chocolate off, yeah. they start popping. Okay. At first, they just taste almost yeah, like a Nestle Crunch pop. bar. Yeah. There, oh, yeah. there we just, go. Yeah. Now they're okay. sizzling in my mouth. Yeah, kind of tame. Yeah. yeah, not that exciting. That's too bad. No. I wanted it, more of a kick. Yeah, a lot more good. It is there, definitely a stoner treat. That oh, would, totally. Yeah. Now let's drink a Coke. I, I like the regular pop. Rocks, Me too. Though. These yeah. give too much of a delay for the kick. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like it's like it's like eating a Hershey's Kiss and then doing pop rocks. Yeah. And they have yeah. a weird, you know, like almost M and M's flavor. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. Consensus is chocolate pop rocks. And Fail. Not that great. Not that great. Thumbs down. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. yeah I saw you know what? That does make sense. Uh, there's somebody at the. Mine are really sizzling. Yeah. Yeah, it's at the back of the neck. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Kind of an annoyance more than a thrill. Uh huh. But. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> yeah. My ears are crackling. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, oh, hey, yeah, that, is, that does make sense. It we're, does. We're fit. wiser <laughs> for having gone through the experience. It's true. So, <laughs> what is what would be your favorite stoner food if we we're on that subject? Uh, hmm. Probably sugar cereal, more specifically. I was going to say cereal, uh, too. And maybe Cinnamon Life or something oh, like that. Nice. I don't know. Just some, some super high-power sugary cereal. Or tons of different kinds of cereal. Yeah. Like, who cares? Just put two cool ones together. And... One time I um, ate so much cereal I made myself yeah. sick. Oh, you can do that because today. yeah, yeah and I was like, man. this is not good. Oh. What when I was high because I was so hungry and oh, I was like, yeah. I have to Was eat it like all Captain food. Crunch or something? So that's why your mouth is all torn up. And, no, I don't even uh. buy that kind of cereal because that makes me so mad. Yeah. It was like huh. Cheerios and Rice Krispies. Oh, it was okay. like huh. I'm I'm more into the non-sugary oh, okay. but like I usually rice checks and yeah, corn oh, I love rice checks. Oh, I usually oh, go to the savory side when I'm if I'm high. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, just something. Yeah, bacon or hmm. pizza. Oh well, pizzas. Oh, pizza. Bacon. Pizza. Well, I mean, are, yeah, you're talking about being high, so I mean, right. yeah. and, you know, all the all the stuff that was good before is still good. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> pizza doesn't stop me. Yeah, no. If anything, yeah. 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 It's just it's what are your party pizzas? Oh, oh yeah, I love yeah. those Totinos. Yeah. Oh, that's my jam. Totally. That is the it's... most like nostalgic food to me. Oh, yeah. Of like truly, when I just became like full gopher broke fat, like yeah. went from chubby kid to like I'm committed to being but, fat. Huh. It was Totinos party pizzas. Yeah, I would a, eat yeah. them that's like by the time. Even pack. actually food. I mean, yeah. it's, it doesn't. T- it's I mean, so good though. It has yeah. a very specific oh, taste. Yeah. You gotta cook them. Like, you cook them just right. Oh yeah. man, I always I would eat them like seriously. I'd go to the Grocery store, buy like six of them and just eat uh, all well, six. Make like a sandwich out in of high it. School. There you go. <laughs> it would be like one would be oh. cooking because they're only like six yeah. minutes, right? Yeah. One would be cooking while I was eating the one, and it would just be like out of the oven, put the next one in. I rolled them up. Oh, yeah. Well, nice. Have you seen? Uh, way back in the day, with uh, oh, I forget what the crowd was, but for Saturday Night Live. They did a commercial called Taco Town. Yes. yes. <laughs> Where they like roll, they start off with uh-huh. a burrito and then they roll all this other stuff into it. I, and it I ends up being for... in like a tote bag and yeah. it's like yeah. seven and they, pounds. Yeah, it's like a pancake yeah. and a pizza. And a... But anyway, so speaking of really there funny. is a place in Seattle on 85th and Greenwood that actually it's called uh, Gorditos, which huh. means fat kid. Fat kid, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Gorditos. Yeah, yeah. 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 and uh, nice. they have a, ba- a baby burrito. And the people, if you bring in your infant, newborn, so and what's your Gordita? Burrito, is then is that a fat woman? Uh-huh. Must be. Oh, okay. I think so. Gorditos, yeah. Okay, yeah. No. Huh. You, if you get so your, when you get a chicken your gordita, gordita in, from... they swaddle up your newborn, make it look like a burrito, get it, oh, take it with it. And it's, it's like a four pound burrito. They that's really thing. funny. You get your burrito for free if you do that. Oh, huh. that's cute. Yeah. I should okay. steal my friend's baby and go. There you go. Yep. <laughs> You're like, I need to borrow your baby for a minute. Yeah, four pound burrito. That's crazy. I did do. 
in my younger days, I would never try this again, but there was a place in Chicago, it was actually when I was on my mission, um, that had the burrito that was like three or four pounds, it was like something ridiculous, and if you eat the whole thing yourself, you get a t-shirt, huh. and I if I went there with some sailors, some Navy guys, yeah. and I ate the burrito, and there were like 12 of us there, and only five of us did it, yeah. and I've never felt more horrible in my whole life. Oh, yeah. It was like the last two inches of it was like, I can do this for a t-shirt. Uh, it was horrible. It was it was delicious until it became horrible. Yeah, you, you ate it to the point you made you were making yourself sick. It was awful and I was like, this is how I know I'm not a competitive eater. Right. It just made me and then I it was like pain for a long time. It was not happy times for Peggy. <laughs> well Mexican food tends to get that gassy anyway. Uh, Where's that gonna go now? I know and it gets very dense. It was it not good. You're not like a frog where it Although, just comes out through your while pores. I'm not a competitive eater, I do love food based dares. Oh, and oh, one time oh. I was out to dinner with my whole improv team and oh. we had ordered all this stuff and this guy on my team had like a lot of black beans on his plate yeah. but he had eaten so many of the other stuff oh. and he was just like, Oh, I can't do it and I was like, I'll pay for you and your wife's meal if you finish all of those black beans. And his wife was like, no. And he was like, I'm doing it. And he went in and like, it was like watching him like stuff black beans down. And then the next time I saw him, he was like, well, the next day that came back with a vengeance. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, yes, have you ever, totally have, worth it. Speaking of, have you ever seen the ones where they do the challenge of the chicken wings, the hot chicken wings? Oh, I've never seen oh. one. I've heard of them. Oh, the yeah. hot wings where they're super hot super hot yeah. like where they have the ghost pepper and stuff they're not it's not fun yeah i've tried one and it doesn't even yeah. taste good oh uh, that's too it's bad horrible I, I love spicy food but there's a limit to it yeah yeah it, it's bitter and it just Ugh. it ruins the taste of the chicken i don't think i would do well on fear factor no me neither so. Yeah, but I do food. love spicy foods. Like I, you know, I, I dig that. But it's when it gets like gross that it's foods. like, yeah, oh, I love spicy foods. Oh, we were, we were talking about something this week, my wife and I, uh, about a food. What was it? You said you would never eat it again. Jello. Jello, because it's, it's historically oh. has been made from animal parts. That no, I mean, not historically. It's it continues still is? to yeah. be made from. Yeah. I mean, they boil tendon, hoods tendon, to get yeah. gelatin. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the how gelatin is tendons and all the thick, the thick yeah. parts. Connected yeah. tissue. And she's like, I'm not eating anymore. Yeah. I was like, and you come from like, Asia where you eat Well, they it. cook it. It's not got bacteria in yeah. it or anything. It's just, it's, there's a, like, the thing that makes hooves hard yeah. is the thing that makes jello solid. You're basically eating fingernails. A little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the look on the line. And he has, like, the cartilage. Yeah. yeah. If you think too hard about a lot of food, it just starts messing. That's why, Elmer's, that's why Elmer's glue is so yummy. It is. It's true. Ooh, I'm speaking of glue. I've been working on some Star Trek The Next Generation paper mache oh, yeah. that is based on um, oh. the the action figures I bought when we were oh. in Tacoma. I made one for my really good friend Ryan that's Worf standing. I made like a little background and Worf is standing there holding Captain Picard's decapitated head. And huh. he has blood all over his mouth. <clears throat> wow. And I just turned it into some um, cannibal. cannibal art. Nice. And yeah. sent it to my friend for his birthday. And now I'm making myself one. And I did a paper mache bridge chair. Like okay. a chair from the huh. bridge. I made it out okay. of paper mache. Which was, I'm, I'm better at paper mache than I knew. Because it looks good. I just have to paint it now. Sure. And Data's going to be sitting on it. And I want him to be holding a martini glass. And then standing with one foot on Riker's decapitated head. Because hmm. oh, I've already nice. cut Riker's head off. Oh. But I don't want him holding the head. I want him holding a martini glass. Because that would be funny to me. So now I just need yeah. to find a tiny martini glass. Because huh. oh, I can't can make them. it out of paper mache. Because it's sure. supposed to be glass. But he has his hand is like shaped like he's holding something, you know, because they're, they're the little action figures that are supposed to be holding weapons or something. Oh, right. Anyway, so now I'm in. I'm making some um, hipster art. Is what That's I'm not, calling it. I like it. Cool. <laughs> it's very fun. I'm enjoying it. Are you going to get into the, like the photography of it as well and kind of set it all up for uh, like no, photos I, and I stuff? No, I made it just to hang on my wall as like a sculpture okay. thing. Yeah, it's on a little square base, and I was gonna put like a thing in it to like connect to the wall. 
Okay. So that was my intention was to make it just like a little piece of art. Oh, cool. So, I like it. yeah, I'll bring, I'll put a picture of it yeah, on when it. I've done painting it. I have a picture of the other one that I thought was just really funny. I sent to my Maybe friends. Take his gallery. I know. Yeah, kind of fun. So let's see what what it, we wanted to talk about. Also, Superman versus Batman. Rick wanted to talk about. Oh well, yeah. I want to make sure we got that. There's going to be a Superman versus Batman. This uh, is I think what I hear. What I, I heard that they were. Is Jesse um, Eisenberg playing Lex Luthor? Because I heard that, but I don't know if it's. That's hard. what I heard too. Yeah, he's the guy from. With, the, uh, social, uh, social network. Social network. Is that not coming yeah. out until uh, 2015, or, or is it this? I have no idea. I think I they've know. just started shooting it, so that sounds about yeah. right. Um, he played a really great cameo on Modern Family, huh. where he played the really condescending hippie neighbor of the gay couple, where he would like come over and be like, um, "You guys are wasting water on your lawn," and like anything like non-environmental, he would like come over and be really shitty to them about. <laughs> and he's so good at being a complete asshole that like he made me actually angry when I watched it. I was like, "Oh man, if I..." I would punch that guy in the face. Nice. Like, he made me right. so mad. Uh, it I was like really fun. Protagonists that do that. Uh huh. He was a big, he played a hippie, so... like, a, like a douchey hippie. Yes, okay. like a, a like the, the asshole who's like got his compost bins out front with a big but, sign but on it. He's that's supposed like, to be Lex Luthor. Yeah, I know. Which will be really interesting. Because Lex Luthor is like. I can see it. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like he's so arrogant that that will work really well. Right, yeah, right. Well, I guess... Um, He'll look crazy bald-headed, though. There Woo! was talk that Ben Affleck would be Batman. Batman. Which, Is, I don't Was know. that for this movie? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I think he'd pull it off, honestly. Really? He's a pretty good actor. Yeah. yeah. No, I've seen him be a superhero, and I was unimpressed. Oh, what was he Daredevil? Here's, uh, oh, Daredevil. that's right, yeah. Here's my, okay, here's my reading of Ben Affleck. Reading in terms of, like, what I, if I was his publicist. Like, he thinks he's hot guy. He, while being a very objectively attractive man, isn't hot guy. He's sweet guy. Oh yeah. Like really, like he's hot, but but how he reads when he gets to like into himself, like the movies where he's doing push-ups shirtless, it reads as arrogant and douchey. Douchey, yeah. But when he plays the guy that like in Argo, who's like a little bit messed up, but like trying to be heroic, that yeah. works so much better. And he's not hot in that. And Batman is hot guy. That's why Christian Bale does Batman so well because Christian Bale is hot. Yeah. Can Christian Bale that. is like the the American psycho, the the charming and like magnetic. Ben Affleck is like the puppy dog, but he doesn't know that about himself. And so like he puppies. keeps trying to do stuff that's like, no, it's like you really like you should. Like would he have made a better Spider-Man? Maybe. Maybe. I kind of like the guy that plays Spider-Man right now, though. He's a British kid. Yeah, I, like I do actually like him. He looks yeah. like my friend Ryan. I, my my Spider-Man will always be Ryan Reynolds. He, Ryan Reynolds they, they would missed, be a great Spider-Man. They Spider -Man. missed a big opportunity when he was younger. That's true. To make him. Yeah, because he's got that. He's that that, that jokey he's sort not, of. He's got his arrogance. Yeah. The yeah. arrogance works for him. Yeah. And he's Green Lantern. Yeah, except that I think that Ryan Reynolds would be a better Batman than Ben Affleck. Yeah. Because Probably he's true. hot. But yeah. Batman's not a jokey sort of dude. I guess he's going to no, be Deadpool. No, but I'm saying, like, mm. like while Ryan Reynolds is very jokey, he reads as magnetic and hot. Oh. And okay. Batman is yeah. magnetic and hot, which is why Batman shouldn't talk. He was Because Deadpool Batman doesn't need to talk. Hmm? Was he Deadpool? Not Deadpool. <laughs> I'm thinking of somebody else. What's that? That's, he was. Uh, Ryan in, Reynolds uh, was. Uh, in, and the um, what was it? The, the Wolverine, the Wolverine movie. movie. Was oh yeah, Deadpool. yeah, 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 totally. I'm thinking of Deathstroke. Oh. That's oh. that DC character, but similar character, oh. but. Well, I think they're doing a Deadpool uh, movie. Okay. So, with Ryan Reynolds and <laughs> Deadpool. Yeah. I know. I never really got into Deadpool as far as following him in comic books or anything. So. Uh, neither have I. No, I just I think Ben Affleck shouldn't be a superhero. Actually, is my yeah. thesis is that he's better as the the guy trying to struggle and overcome, and I think you want him to succeed and you you're on his side, but he's not the. I have all these powers because it reads to like I don't root for him like in in the one where he's blind um, 
Oh my gosh. Uh, Daredevil. Daredevil. I didn't ever root for him. I was like, you seem like you're kind of a dick. Huh. Like, if he just isn't, when he's too confident, he yeah. isn't um, I, relatable. I, I but think, like Ryan Reynolds, when he's too confident, it's charming. Yeah, and but, when Christian Bale is too confident, it's sexy. And you're I like, think ooh. What it is too, I don't know what the difference Bale is. Affleck can make a really good, good uh, protagonist, too. Mm-hmm. Or, or evil guy. Like it. Oh, totally. Uh, He'd be a great evil guy. Like Maul. Maul. Mall rats. He he was sort oh, of right, the, the right. douchey, oh, yeah. you yeah. know, kind uh-huh. of evil guy. But he he won't play bad ones, yeah, I which he I think should. he's probably perfect for he because totally yeah, he's one that he would love to hate. You mm-hmm. know, he's got and that sort of really. I think his directing talent surpasses his acting talent, in my hmm. opinion. Oh, yeah. And I think he should just keep making movies because I thought The Town and Argo were like two of the best yeah. movies in the last few years. And he, he should just do that. No, you know, no. I heard that he got kind of criticized for the. Town. Like, I wasn't loved a, the I town. Liked it too. I, I really thought like there it. was stuff he did in it that was so sharp and like the story was great and the characters were great. I thought he I thought Did he write those as well? Um he well, definitely if, at least partially wrote Argo. I'm not yeah. sure about the town. Okay, but I'm sure because it's wasn't in his, he part of writing Good Will Hunting yeah. as well? Uh huh. Yeah, he yeah. and Matt Damon yeah. and they, they had William Goldman helping them. Okay. Who was like the screenwriter who wrote Princess sure. Bride. And I just wondered it, yeah, stuff. how much is him of that was him that was writing what he's been well, successful at. I assumed it was him because it's a uh, Boston yeah. thing, and I was like, oh, well, he probably wrote it, but well, I don't know. Okay. But I do know he at least partially wrote Argo because I heard him talking about writing it in an interview. Okay. I just, I think he's a talent, but I think that the, the jump to go, oh, he's the next um, A-lister who, so clearly he has to do Batman, I go, eh, well, that yeah. was Nicolas Cage as Superman in the 90s, yeah. and that yeah. would have been a horrible mistake, yeah. even though that would have turned into, like, the most hilarious movie yeah. of all time. Yeah. I think if, if well, if social you media basically does tend to ban yeah. the way they think, because they brought back Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah. they, they, they once scrapped it because the social media blew Went up at nuts. it. Nuts, yeah. Because well, they, and I think also it's, I'm, I'm sure it'll change to somebody else soon, because yeah. they announced it so quick after right. they won the Academy Award for Argo, right. that it, to me it felt like stunt casting to get people talking about right. it. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. You know, I, I, I didn't even hear who they said they were going to play Superman. Is it still Henry Cavill? Yeah. Because I dig oh. him as Superman. Yeah. I thought he was great. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's it's neat to get people that are well known into yeah. those types of roles. I mean, <clears throat> and then stick with them. Like, Michael Keaton should have always just been Batman. Yeah. I mean, well, I know, the reboot was sort of you know, no, the reboot was done, good, but, but the, when they switched to George Clooney, they're yeah. in the middle of the same series yeah. with the same director. You know, Michael Keaton that would that actually be a good uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he's, he's kind of aged. Yeah, cool. aged. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, Bruce Keaton Willis would, nuts, would, would just oh, knock out the park. Actually, but, but, oh, go ahead. Sorry. He'd be more of a... I, him, though, would be more like a... Like, he'd play Superman, but Superman still had hair, though. So that would be weird. Put on a wig. But, yeah, I always envisioned him as like an old Captain America, though. Yeah. So, do you guys ever watch Jimmy Kimmel? I very rarely do, but I um, saw like one tiny thing Jimmy that was Kimmel. so funny. Yeah, do I like his yeah. unnecessary like censorships. Oh, I do like those. Yeah. He does a little one that's, um, so, I forget, it's called Mean Tweets. It's celebrities oh. reading tweets that are mean about them. And oh. it's set to this really sad music, and they're looking oh. in the camera. And they'll, it'll be like, you know, the guy from The Office saying, like, like I hate, or one of them was like, uh, I think it was Jennifer Lopez, and it was like, I hate, oh, no, 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 it was Julia Louis-Dreyfus. And she was oh, no. reading a tweet, and it was like, like, oh, look at me. I'm Julia Louis-Dreyfus, that bitch from Seinfeld, that show where white people eat pickles and shit. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. And, like, she's kind of, like, laughing about it. It's really funny. But then um, Hank from Breaking Bad was on, and he was reading one, and he was like, let's face it, Hank from Breaking Bad is basically just a fat Bruce Willis. And then he, like, looks in the camera and just, like, <laughs> like, he, like a you sad You could tell face. he was trimming up a little bit, though. He was. He totally uh, got trimmed. Yeah. The last season, he was he was basically just Bruce <laughs> Willis. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Willis. Yeah. It was so yeah. funny to me, though, because I, like, cool. burst out laughing because I was like, that's yeah. what everybody's thinking, well, right? Have you seen any of the, of the Pete Holmes uh, I love, shows. Yeah, you told me right to watch on. it, and I went on and cool. just watched like he, all of the He calls sketches. himself a lesbian uh, 
<laughs> Val Kilmer. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Val yeah. Yeah, that it's totally funny. works. Yeah. Pete Holmes is a Isn't freaking he? talent. I, I like great. him a lot. Yeah, he's, he's he's just gonna get better and better. Hopefully, yeah. Um, yeah, he, yeah. He's a, a his podcast is great, by the way. Oh like, yeah. He yeah. made it weird. Yeah, isn't he part of the Inside Kids too? No, that's Indoor Kids. Indoor Kumail kids. Nanjiani, yeah, my, that's one him. of my personal favorite stand-up comedians. Yeah. Kumail Nanjiani's stand-up okay. is like yeah, so it's... sharp and so good. Like yeah. every word he says is funny to me. Yeah, even just he's... he has, he's from Pakistan, right? And his accent, he'll use certain words that just sound funny in his yeah, voice. Yeah, totally. And totally, it's yeah. like uh, even just he's, him. He's got the complete package words. where he says things uh-huh. and he says things funny. Which, yep, you know, because totally. there's two kinds of comedians. There's ones that are, they right, say right. the most hilarious things, but, you know, they're but not I'm really, gonna, yeah, but then there's the ones that, that they're, what they say really isn't funny, like Ron White, but, man, yeah. whatever he's talking about, it's just hilarious. His because persona's it's, yeah. so good. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Upon it too. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And totally. it's usually and something true that, that makes it funny. Yeah. yeah. It's usually has, it's based in. Because he, he does this bit about um, a drug called cheese oh, that's yeah. like heroin and cough syrup. Right. And his, what he's saying is really funny because he's like yeah. you already have yeah, heroin. The heroin but then his voice is like you already have heroin <laughs> and like whenever he says the word heroin, <laughs> heroin it makes me laugh so hard and I'm like right. I just want him to say the word heroin over yeah, and over, over again, again. So, heroin <laughs> so good anyway yeah, I that, love him he's that could the be your text or heroin. Okay. heroin I like the way they do that with Modern Family with Ju- with the uh, Oh, the, oh yeah, Sophia. Sophia, thank you. Yeah, uh, Bergara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She's she's like like Charo, but sharp yeah. into a yeah. really fine yeah. point. Right. Well, we just right. like really finished the talented last Charo CD of, of the last season. Oh, not nice. not the newer one. I like the yeah, one where she was yeah. she was pregnant and she had the mic the the, the speakers hooked up to her belly and, uh, she was and singing into her belly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, horribly singing into her belly. Oh. She's really like she's funny and actually like. If you go back, she used to do like really shitty B comedies in Latino oh, movies in right, okay. like the early 2000s, late 90s. Yeah. There's a couple movies like I was watching like USA or something, and I was like, wait a minute, that's Sofia Vergara, yeah. and it's like the worst movie. And you can go back and watch her old stuff and watch her go from like hack really bad right. oh, yeah. and just sharpen her timing. And by yeah. the time she gets on Modern Family, she's just like throwing darts, like she's oh, so yeah. sharp because she used to be. Just just like Charo, I'm like, oh, it's funny to have big boobs so and be Latino, sort of, right. but like she took it and like actually became a really oh, cool. talented comedian, and I'm like, that makes me like her. Huh. Speaking of Charo, she, she's she, she where, she where's she at now? You know, I think she might still be performing. I'm yeah. not even kidding. Yeah. I saw her on like a, a a TV show, like a daytime, like Today Show or something, and she's got to be like 80. Right. And she looks she's exactly just the same. Plastic surgery to oh the my yeah, gosh, stretched. Would... And her hair kind of yeah. covers all this stuff going on. Yeah. But I remember going like, "Is that Charo? Like, because huh. she well, looked so exactly the what same." What was the variety yeah. show back yeah. in the early early yeah. early seventies, late sixties? Had the yeah. tagline "Sock it to me." Oh yeah. Uh, um, oh, why can't I? Uh, Goldie Hawn was yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Laughing. Yes. Laugh exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really yeah. Cool. Totally. I, I huh. like that. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it too. Yeah. I was a big like Smothers Brothers fan, oh, and yeah. I like. Yeah. I, Dave, you, I watched a documentary about them, and oh, really? uh, and their their bouts with the uh, networks to try to get certain things on because huh. because they came out like when the Vietnam War was happening. Right, right. A lot yeah. of they really wanted to kind of push a lot of the limits as far as. You know what? What, they, what was acceptable about? to, to um, discuss no, yeah, and stuff? You look and at those shows; they were pretty that's, edgy that's for the cool. time. Yeah, well, that's why they that. they kind of dropped out was because it, it just came to one final sort of battle like that. Yeah, this yeah, is an interesting. Weird. Battle. That's cool. I'd like to see that. It's so interesting how like things are are like for their era, shocking or not shocking. You know what I mean? Like I was. It, this is totally random and only loosely related. But I was listening to the Adam Carolla show recently, and he had the girl from the Cherry Pie video for Warrant. Oh, yeah. right, right. On. And because she's now does like a reality show about like old hmm. rocker girls okay. oh, who, because oh. she was married to Janie Lane and then she was married to Tommy Lee, I think. Huh. And then like right before Pam Anderson. And so she's had like 
So okay. she's part of this, like, you know, rock groupy okay. model right. crowd. But she was talking about how the Cherry Pie video, she was like, now we watch it and go, oh, it's, you know, sexy and cute. At the time, it was, it was really sexist. Oh, no, yeah. sexist. Really? I mean, risque, but she was like, she was like, it was like you are degrading women by doing this. And people responded that way. And she was like, now everybody does it. Nobody cares. And I was like, have we become well, more sexist? You no, know, because we've realized what it really was. And they're not degrading all women. They're yeah. degrading some women who choose to behave in that and they're not throwing a big blanket over all women are just objects that we need to whatever it's yeah. some women well, and are. I think it's a not... lot of women have taken like say pornography like right. my boss has made this statement that like all pornography is anti-women and oh. when she said it I was like why no, women can't if... like sex like to me that's that's anti-feminist sure. yeah, the exactly. idea is like women yeah. have to be like like we have to all wear modest clothes and sit quietly and like that idea i'm like if someone wants to do pornography let them do pornography yeah, yeah. And like was it. but she comes from an era where it's like women were forced into pornography oh, and right, exploited. right, right. right. But well, I no, think if that's, that's occurring then yeah no, yes. no 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 you, you can't be abusive with right it. right right so and like the, the linda lovelace the star of um yeah where she pretty much deep doped, road doped up a movie came oh. out about her that was she wrote a book that was like Dope throat. Uh, <laughs> <Sorry. dope. laughs> Deep throat. Um, she wrote a book that was like, oh, this time I wasn't a porn star. I was a abused wife who was right. forced into yeah, pornography. Yeah, and that is illegal. And it's like, well, and... that's, that's yeah, but, exploitation. But even and... how is that hurting the rest of women even then still? Yeah. I, mean, I just don't... I mean, yeah, there's going to be... I don't know. I, yeah. don't know. I just don't I, see... I, I'm with you, but I think also that like my right. boss's perspective is a system which makes it easy for women to be exploited is inherently exploitative of women and i i think now we look at it and go well but if that woman is choosing that then that's not it's not like it's legal and, you know right. and you know how that, that's that's on the police system it has yeah. nothing to do with anything that right. we can vote for or do anything about so totally. Yeah, and that's the thing. And I was thinking about, like, so the cherry pie video at the time was seen as being very sexist, and now I don't see it as... I mean, I see it as, like... It looks 80s and cheesy. Well, clearly, yeah, what's, but... what's morally acceptable, the bar has moved, yeah, you totally. know, as to And what... I just wondered if it had moved in a we're more permissive of things that are sexist now, and I wondered. And I was like, I don't... Maybe it just it's changed. I think it's... it's um, even bad publicity is good publicity in a sense. So even right. if you are, if you are pushing the envelope, you're going to get the attention. Yeah. And that's what I think drives the the pushing the envelope of what's acceptable and what's not. Because look at yeah. South Park. I mean, a yeah. lot of their episodes, even as of late, are are about nothing more than let's see how extreme we can get, yeah. just to, just for extreme sake. Yeah. Totally. You know, like like the right. water park episode. Where, right. I love I mean, that. Episode. A, <laughs> well, yeah. But they did but it it's for, blatantly yeah. just trying to push yeah, what's totally. acceptable right. on TV and. You know, I mean, and they certainly a, have the art of that. Yeah, which, as a person who thinks that it does nothing but good things, I like that sure. because I'm like, you know, the, the the more taboo things are, the quieter people. You know, I I just think every if if we can talk about everything all the time, then we're better off. Yeah. And if we choose right, not right, to, right. then yeah, have yeah. a show that's like you all sense, fart jokes, yourself. then that's fine. But totally. we need to be able to have it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. yeah. Or even racist stuff or sexist stuff. Like, if we're not able to do those things, I think our society is worse off. Sure. Not that we should be doing those, or like, not that the boy, the loudest voice out there should be like, yeah, let's hate people of a certain race or gender, but that it's right. being able to talk about those things brings stuff to the surface sure. and creates a, a place where we can actually make commentary about whether things are sexist or not, or racist or not, it, or whatever. Right, like, right. I think that's good for us a as civilized humans. dialogue sure. about yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I just, that just makes us freer. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, it's because, true. Yeah, as long as there's no abuse happening, yeah. why should anyone else care? Right. <clears throat> and, and it was funny, we, when that came up at, we were at a work party, um, it was like people were talking about like, just like, like being really like, oh, like feigning like disgust with a certain subject matter. And I was like... Hmm. 
there, I know, and I, I brought up, and I was like, you guys are all full of crap, and here's why. Because there was a study in Canada right. that for 10 years, have I brought this up in the show yeah, before? Because yeah. it's my favorite mm. thing to bring up. Maybe it was good. For 10 years was trying to do a study on whether watching pornography had any impact on mental health. Right. Mm. And at the end of 10 years, they published a report saying... We cannot finish this study because we were unable to find enough people who had never viewed pornography yeah. to create a control group. Therefore, we must conclude that it does not have an impact on mental health huh. because there's virtually nobody who doesn't. And this pornography. is coming from Canada, which they're pretty calm. Totally. They're, they're not, and I was like, well, you there can go you to go. The local Mormon temple workers. <laughs> you know, I'm sure but, they don't, but but I don't know. have at some point. Oh. And during your your formative or just even years, being exposed to yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Okay. During your formative years, people like I, the the temple presidency presidentiest temple president, I'm sure when he was 14, yeah. peeped at some booby yeah. because well, it's normal. One, one it's who is so going to normal. rape or abuse like that right. is going to, regardless of yes. whether they view right. pornography or not. Exactly, you know? and, it's right. common sense and, because, like in the Yanomamo tribe of Papua New Guinea, everyone walks around naked all the time, and yeah. I'm sure they have lower rape rates than most of our big cities because yeah. Yeah. it's like. There's just like human nature <laughs> to me. It's that it's, actually sounds funny. I guess. I'm thinking about the, the, the what do you call them? The Yanomamo. Yeah, that's a real tribe. I watched a documentary about them. It's they a, are the most recent but the isolated. Rape, the rape just did, 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 did. Yeah. statistics of the Yanomamo. Yeah. That would be really funny. <laughs> um, you should do a, 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 a documentary on that. <laughs> the rape statistics of the yeah. Yanomamo. But they are the most recently discovered, completely isolated from Western culture tribe. Yeah. They were discovered in like the 1950s. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And um, had zero contact with the outside world, hmm. and so they're used as like an anthropological control group in a lot of ways to go. Well, this is how they do things, and they had no connection with us, but we have these similarities and these differences. And there's well, no. It's, really it's also when people try to put causality right. on oh, yeah. behavior that I really get kind of because now I mean suddenly they're going to get into every aspect of what right. we do and and that's why of... every time people say TV fries kids brains I say I watched the maximum amount of television yeah. from birth to today <laughs> and I'm a very intelligent person yeah. and like I have a master's it's... degree and a pretty good IQ so if it fries brains I must have been like the Einstein and it's yeah. fried well, they, they said cigarettes were good for you yeah. I, mean, it's yeah, just I, so I probably watched the same amount up until recent. Yeah. And oh no, I I sure. pushed the limits yeah. on the amount of television think, a person can watch. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, is people who say that aren't social scientists. And I would argue that social scientists go. Oh no, there's no like video games. No, the the research shows that their video games have no yeah, impact but, on but violence. What might impact though is if you restrict that. Uh, child or whatever, yeah. like if you keep sweets away from them, or you, if you keep oh, yeah. video they're games, or if you attractive. if you withhold yeah. those things that are out there and so they do get exposed. Exactly. To so it. so it's the, like the Amish the, kids who get released at age nineteen exactly. and start doing right, crack. Right. So you're right doing away. actually more harm yeah. by trying to control. Yeah, but it's it's interesting to me because there's a perception mm -hmm. in like the media that science is still out on whether video games make people violent and I'm like well then none of you have read any of the social science out there because we've decided that a long time ago and no you know, you know what makes people violent when they get hungry yeah. And when they need shelter and when totally. they need food. So why don't we worry about poor people? I know. My response is always, are... what video game was Genghis Khan playing? Yeah, there you go. Homeboy or Hitler. Violent, or Hitler. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. this human behavior yeah. is the same. Our... Yeah. our Minds, it's all the people out there go, Oh, video games are so violent. Chess. I'm like, yeah, I play yeah. the most violent video games I can find, and I'm a social worker. Yeah. Well, Clearly, it is not making me want, I can't even hit someone in the face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with boxing like, gloves on. Uh, right, right. Well, I mean, you can argue like, that really? chess or checkers is the same sort of way. Yeah. It's you're trying to defeat something uh -huh. else, you know, you're totally. trying to overcome something. Yeah, it's it just drives me crazy when people like project their fears onto things. Yeah, and I'm like, No, yeah. you need to yeah. really think about this because you're like you are assuming something that is so untrue yeah. that like I don't know anyway that, that it? makes it was, me it was a the mothers uh, when we were in uh, when we were in high school when they were coming out with the uh, with the uh, the music advisory like the oh, music yeah. was oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 if you hear the word oh, that was, pussy that you're was, gonna 
turn into uh, a rapist. Tipper, or not, tipper, yeah, Tipper, tipper Gore. Gore yeah, was, totally. was part of that. That's why they have the rating system. Uh -huh. Yeah, freaking yeah. music. I know. Games. Interesting. They used to have a t shirt Which, that had that on there. That yeah, old. now I'm all for that. If there's something right. in there, go ahead and say it. But don't but ban take it people out. from uh, doing right. it. Right. That's why they had you the know, label on there. And actually, yeah. that boosted their sales. Mm -hmm. If anything, that was else. actually well, yeah, to see that little explicit sort of. Yeah. And that's the thing that, like, if you, like, like, if you want to describe it, fine, but if you are implying that it does something that it doesn't exactly. do, then, right, right, no. right, right. Like, yeah. if there's something, like, I no longer pay attention to the ratings of movies, and our sister does, and yeah. I'll be talking to her about a movie, and she'll be like, oh, is that rated R? And I go, I have no idea, because yeah. honestly... Yeah. Doesn't but matter. Rating means nothing well, to there's me. there's a big proponent in, in their church yeah. that is like PG thirteen or nothing. Right. Yeah, you know that's like a big and it's meaningless because the rating system is my human, physical therapist but... too. As I, I when I was talking about certain movies, it's like, have you seen this movie? It's really good. Well, is it rated R? And I go, yeah. He goes, oh, I probably I have... a Mormon. Yeah, he's Mormon. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because well, for some, well, not for some reason. They just have this mentality that if you don't expose yourself to things, you'll be a better person. And I fundamentally disagree. But I mean, I just, you can I be do. exposed to the stuff that gets under like the, the PG thirteen. That's pretty bad. It's really what, what they're worried about offensive. more though too is if you if you're like talking to a prospective investigator and oh you watch R rated movies as well and now suddenly you're hypocritical because you're you like like if I had a beard and went out with the missionaries on splits right. it's like wait well you have a beard what are you talking about the gospel for yeah. kind of thing and that's what they're more afraid of than anything right. really is how are the, how are you going to make look? Oh, the I church had a, look a yeah. seminary teacher who told me that um he doesn't order root beer at, at restaurants uh -huh. because people will think it's Coke. And Just people, the color, yeah. But you can yeah. drink Coke. That's the thing. Like caffeine, you, you're not supposed to drink yeah. coffee, but you can drink Diet Coke or whatever. But he's so up his own ass about it yeah. that he didn't even want people to think he might be drinking yeah, the a brown thing liquid they with ice in it that's carbonated. <laughs> and he said he wouldn't ever drink herbal tea for the same reason. Because and I was like, this is so What's much the deal meaningless. With that? Anyway, that, okay, well, what what they would say, yeah. what they would tell you is is that you're. You're a servant of Christ, of or you're, you're you're a representative of Jesus yeah. Christ. So you can't do anything that might cause people to question that, or right. something like that. So yeah, how would so drinking coffee question? Because, because there was a prophet who said that Mormons, his name is Joseph Smith. Yeah. Mormons shouldn't drink hot tea or hot drinks, which were interpreted to mean alcohol, coffee, or tea. Right. So and so alcohol, coffee, and tea. No Mormon is allowed to drink. Right. And well, so they can. They just, you just can't get in right. the temple. You can't with get into the temple. And they, so they've ex in modern times they've extrapolated that that should probably include caffeinated drinks because coffee and tea both have right. caffeine, yeah. which yeah. is arbitrary and a uh, subject okay. of debate. And so some people don't drink Coke. I always drink Coke. Yeah. But I also drink coffee, clearly. It's but right. um, even back in the day, is it's it, is it arbitrary. Coke? Isn't it true that Coke is owned a lot? A lot of the, the shares are owned by Mormon. <laughs> I have no idea. Probably, be. but technically, you can drink coke and go to the temple. It's yeah. just certain people. Right, and the, uh, a missionary told me once this way. He's like, it's it's not being addicted to substances. It's right. like, it's more your, you know, if you can handle it in moderation, then fine. Yeah, because tobacco if you can, is then, in it too. But right, because no. it's tobacco. the sins that sort of hang on to you and keep you down, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, okay, so, the addictions. Addictions, exactly. Okay, so. So Which then in itself, can't that be an addiction? Being addicted to, to things? To, no, not be addicted to things. Like, oh, being like, like, like anti, oh, yeah, yeah. anti Well, oh, the, yeah. the, I think what it is, I mean, personally, it's a, a, it's a code of behavior that's inclusive that says oh, if you're in yeah. this co in this group of people, here's how we behave. Right. And it's identifying the people yeah. in and the people yeah. out, which yeah. is the part of it that I don't like because I think that whether I drink a cup of coffee or not says nothing about my ability to be a good person. Yeah, because well, from they, they want you to wear a white shirt to church. Yep. They want you to shave. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, they don't. You can't not be a part of the church if you do those things. Right. But but you are. It's, there is a very strong social code. And yeah. I mean, I even saw it when I was living in Africa, and they right, were taking right. people from, you know, African culture and putting them in white, white shirts right. and ties. Yeah, but, okay, and so you, you'll be able to go to church, but culture. you won't you won't be giving talks. You won't be yeah. holding any kind of real sort of authority figures within the church, uh, or 
the you know the, they really are. Because there's a, a, and it's part of the theology in a lot of ways that your outside is a reflection of your inside. So if your outside doesn't look so great, there's something going on with you. And to me, that ostracizes the poor and the sick and the people with mental oh, yeah. illness. And right. to me, that's yeah. fundamentally anti. Well, because if you were if you were sinning, why would wouldn't God be punishing you? Right. You know? Oh, right. Which to me, like even as a an atheist now, I look at Jesus and go, oh, that is so not what Jesus is. And, and, oh, yeah, and right. Mormons don't think that it's it does that, but like watching well, Yeah, they don't look at the judge that. not lest yeah. you be judged, or right, right, when he right, talks to that, right. like, that rich dude and says, give up all your riches yeah. then if you want to follow me. They go, and but he's like, the ah. state president lives in that big house on the hill exactly. and has his own business, yep. so he's doing okay. Yep. And he's like, I give 10 bucks to the fast offering every month, so sure. I'm, I'm sure they give more than that. Right. But like, well, 10%. Percent. Yeah, 10%. And so it's it's this weird like um, in other like in general Christianity they call it the gospel of prosperity, which is right. that Jesus favors those who love him and so he'll give you riches. And the LDS church has it in a different way. They don't say that, yeah. but it exists in that oh, yeah. organization. Yeah. And that like it, it gets yeah. under my and skin big time. A lot of clicks that occur within oh, yeah. the church. It's like a whole different culture. I mean it's like yeah. You know, a big group of people that get together every single uh -huh. Sunday, and families All that grow up together, and, and families I had, that, yeah. I had a truck oh, driver totally. come through. I had a truck driver come through. I was loading him up. I was talking to him. As I was loading him, and he's actually from Utah, and uh, he was talking about. Hey, he's a born again Christian. That's what he. He's oh, a born again. Yeah, and then his wife is Mormon. Okay. I was like, okay. That's a... I said, so I must get pretty. And then I, I said. Uh, I was he so, Mormon at any time? He grew up in the Mormon. Okay. Yeah, okay. He goes, you know what? I hauled the fabric for the underwear. Oh, for nice. The magic underwear. Oh, yeah. He goes, he goes that stuff is beefy. Huh. He goes, it's beefy? beefy okay. Like, it's really hearty stuff. Oh, yeah. It's fire right. resistant. I said, oh, it must be the same stuff they use in NASCAR. Oh, the that's Nomex, funny. The Nomex suits. The hard. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's supposed to keep you from getting burned or whatever. Well, it's supposed to not physically keep you from getting burned, but, but the there's some thing. It's like folklore if, about it that Jesus right, so magically if, makes it keep you from getting burned. Yeah, well, let's, no let's say, say someone gets shot and they're wearing that, <laughs> yeah. right? You can't say, well, God protects you from all the injuries, because then it's up to God. So you can say anything that you want, and right. it's God's plan and, or it's and not. And to be fair, and that's it, a little bit in the mysticism of the LDS <laughs> Church that is technically yeah, yeah. not doctrine, but it's that people are like, oh, I had a cousin who was in a fire and he's burned yeah. everywhere but his garments. It's yeah. kind of the, it, the, the mysticism yeah. part of the church, not necessarily uh, the actual doctrine of the right. church. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. There's also these stories about like there's these people called the three Nephites who were granted eternal right. life on earth yeah. and they wander the earth and it's in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And people have stories about like picking up hitchhikers and it's one of the three Nephites who tells them to have food storage. You need to store your food and then they're like, oh, it's the three Nephites. Which, okay, how long have they been telling you to store food like since the 70s? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you know. It's bullshit. It's total. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, even the story. It's a good I mean, idea, but Regardless, yeah. I mean, yeah, you always want to be prepared, but they right. make it sound like next year I know. you're going to have to use all the. I mean, it, there's a lot of I can, I can see it happening in the but. Mormon Church between because there are people who are like doomsdayers, big time, okay, okay. who like live. Doomsday preppers. They they like have bunkers and live on the skirts of cities right. and right. like don't want a lot of interaction with society and well, homeschool their Richland, kids. And, every every home had a bomb shelter, oh, right? totally. not because of Mormonism, but yeah. because they're they, but, the whole right. Uh, nuclear yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then you have the range of that's that's one end, and then the other end is like, oh, it's just a nice story, and I like the family stuff, and I yeah. hang out at church, and don't uh, buy into yeah. all of the, you yeah. know. They're, really, they're in you, the church, not of the yeah, church. Yeah, totally. But even if you look at Joseph Smith, he was a doomsday, or big time, of his era. Right. I mean, he yeah. was building a city thinking that God was going to return imminently. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know? He was like, this is the end times, and that was in 1840, so... Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm a little bit... I've had that discussion with the Je Jehovah Witnesses before when they tell me that the end is coming. I go, really, when? I want to well, think. Okay, so if Jesus came in the meridian of time, where's... Uh -huh. I guess if you figured out where the meridian of time is, 
Right. And so it'd be what, two thousand years before now. Before now, or, or how was, much was there before? If you look at geology, there was millions of years before. Right, that, right. I guess. So. Well, when when did Adam and Eve occur? I guess it's, it's just like well, when, they, when they, every year, every New Year's, right around New Year's, they start quoting most yeah. yeah. of And it is to me fundamentally narcissistic because right now we believe that we are the most important, and we cannot imagine a world continuing too much farther past this. Yeah. And so because he, the human mind can't extrapolate future we go oh well this must be I also well, like and that's the, uh, the whole premise of religion that I don't get either it's like such a okay I did this in the past and this will happen to me in the future it's like what about now yeah. Right, you know, yeah, it's totally. like what? What if heaven was now, mm -hmm. and you're just missing out? See, on, you know, I really enjoy and that thought. It, it's like he could, totally. My son Keegan actually had a uh, a panic attack, like an anxiety attack. Uh, he was freaking yeah, out because because I I tell him I'm an atheist. I don't believe in the afterlife. I don't believe in any of that stuff. It's all about uh, punishment and reward. You just like when you punish your kid. You know, if you do this good, you'll get this. If you do this wrong, you get this punishment. And so they kind of raised him like that, and. But Kanita being Buddhist, he doesn't know where to go. He doesn't have anything. Like, I don't tell him he has to go to church. I say, you can go if you want. He goes, and then he goes, well, what, what happens when you die? I said, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. And then he started. That is the question. Being 14 years old, he's got all these hormones. He's thinking about girls. He's thinking about where, you know, how his body's changing and stuff. And he actually freaked the fuck out. He was like not happy. He's like, Dad, I'm really scared. I said, Why? Just be aware of what you where you're at right now. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry. About... I mean, you can prepare. Developmentally, but... that's really normal because yeah. your your brain doesn't develop the ability to be that like discerning of ambiguity. Right. Until you know, so he may grow into. The, I mean, some people never grow out of that fear of like, but there has to be something. But I'll, I kind of. I realized could, a little bit know? too that his anxiety is almost like the re reason why religion was it is. created no, because you can't explain where you go. Well, I think it, religion crazy. kind of was created so that people that took money would have no competition. I mean, that's, that's true. That's where the church yeah. was created. Oh, I, 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 that's, that's what I meant. Like, churches as far right. as yeah. like if you think about like anthropologically, like people in tribes looking at like looking at their lives, going, "Well, this person's dead now. What?" And they became they the stars. Yeah, they, totally. they, that's you know that a lot of people. They, they that's where the stars came yeah. from. That's their ancestors and stuff. Yeah, you know? I think it's natural. Yeah. You know, and people come up with their different conclusions. But I think, I mean, for me personally, as I've said before. Oh, like uh, it's it's to me it, I find it uh, more comforting to think of of this life being worth it in and of itself than to think sure. of it as being some kind of waiting ground where we're being yeah, messed with if, by a if you're magical guy waiting in the sky. for something to make you happier yeah. then right. the next thing's just you just have to wait for the next thing to make right, you happy right. totally. you know it's a vicious I made him feel better by saying look we're all just like these beings of energy we're just energy in a form of like yeah form you know what I'm I'm afraid of when I die is that whatever pain it is is that this is going to occur the 10 seconds before I start breathing. Right. That's what I'm afraid of. You know, yeah, I'm, afraid totally. of, I'm actually really I'm fearful of lingering. Oh, that uh, would or, suck. Well, dude, yeah. yeah, dying a yeah. slow, painful death. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, lingering. But, but it's not the you know I don't care. I mean, I imagine it's probably going to be much like what happens when we go to sleep, right. only a little yeah. more so. Totally. Or but, what happened before we were born. What yeah, well, no one's going to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, but what makes me feel better about it? Yeah, we're going out of time. We're like so, yeah, whatever happens is going to happen. That's what I... Yeah, totally. True, yeah. yeah. All right, we missed Peggy's privates this time. So. Oh, that's okay. I'll tell you about them next week. Yeah. They're really exciting. We, we need to actually uh, get up. I want to, before we go, I want to get a picture of you before and after as I show the progression because it's really impressive what Peggy's <laughs> going through. I have, but, as of today, lost sure. 40 pounds. It's um, good. I cool. heard Pictures of me. I mean, our, our weekly yeah. pictures oh, are. Yeah. I mean, we have. I done kind of have this theory that you don't want to do our pictures so that they'll be a little more dramatic. Oh no! no. It's, <laughs> honestly, the reason I haven't no. been taking pictures is uh, that I there's so many of them. I look like I haven't showered because it's, uh, we do it so early in the morning, and I'm like, eh. like to me, I'm like, how many sad, tired pictures can we have of the three of us where we, true. you know? But mostly that's my narcissism. Okay. But um, we could take a picture. I don't mind. I mean, my hair is a little okay. rough, but I'll you look survive. Good. Oh, thanks. And you know, you know where it really shows is in, in your face. Yeah, your, my your... face is always the first thing to go. Yeah. But I am wearing pants two sizes smaller. Nice. And I bought slacks two weeks ago, and I put them on last night. 
and they were two sizes smaller than the jeans I'm wearing now, which I have a major belt on with because I don't want to buy new jeans. Right. But the two sizes smaller slacks, I pulled them up, zipped them up, and was like, well, these are a little more roomy than I bought them two weeks cool. ago. Cool. The carb thing just kicks in at a certain point, and it's gangbusters. That's and to, this week I had five workouts in the gym. Cool. I'm kicking ass. Like, so I'm, your I'm, privates I'm, are getting harder? <laughs> Boom! We gotta end on that one. All right. All right. Thank you for coming, everybody. Uh, so go Huzzah! Huzzah!